Today, Operation Anti-Spruik in the Northern Beaches. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to this post covering finance and problem news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Well, courtesy of Cookie Boy, we've got some more examples of property price falls from the portals. And we're going to focus in on areas of New South Wales, up on the northern beaches, and just over into the central coast. This is an area of significant interest because we know that in this area, from our data, many households are in strife. And once again, we'll be comparing the data provided by Cookie and also the information from our core market models, which looks specifically at household stress and our property scenarios. And I'll remind you again that our scenarios are trying to get a sense of where property prices may go. The best case assumes that interest rates don't rise much more from where they are and come down over the next few months. The base case assumes that prices will be suppressed more because interest rates are going to rise for longer and the worst case is in line with what the bond market is currently assuming about interest rates which are going to stay over four percent through the end of 2023 and into 2024. Now there are other assumptions too but those are the critical ones that really sensitize the model and we'll take account of the current levels of demand and the current levels of stress. And we define stress in terms of cash flow, money in, money out. And if you want to go into this in more detail, do join us next Tuesday for our live show, where I'll share the mortgage stress information through to the end of September. And also, we can do a deep dive into individual postcodes using the data from my model. So mark your diary on that. Anyhow, with that introduction, let's now have a look at this particular area. We're going to start in postcode 2085. 2085 includes Bellrose. And this is an example of a house. It's a four bedroom, three bathroom, two car on 695 squares. It has a gross rental yield of 4.6%. And it was listed 129 days ago on the 25th of May this year. On the 12th of July, it was on for sale between 1.75 and 1.925. And now on the 2nd of September, it's listed for sale at $1.7 million. And if we look at the information in this postcode, and this is the latest iteration of our core market model, which has got quite a lot more information in it, it's quite interesting to see that we have just over 4,000 households in the postcode that 42% own their properties outright, 47% are borrowing and 10% are renting. And if we look in the situation with regard to stress, 14% of those with mortgages have issues, but pretty much all those renting are finding the cash flow pressures significant. And as a result of that, we do have some stressed investors in the postcode and overall 24% of households are in financial stress. Now, looking at our price scenarios, even the best case scenario for houses suggests that over the next two or three years, we could see a cumulative fall of up to 10%. Whereas the base case scenario is a significant drop, more than 30%. And the worst case scenario, which would assume an international recession hits Australia, interest rates are having to stay high because of inflation, and we end up with a recession locally too, we could see prices well, pretty much get chopped in half. Now, that's not my base case at all, but it is one to bear in mind. If we look at the property profiles from the census, 83% of properties are houses, 8% are units, and there are some other ones that are linked, for example, to commercial properties or over shops. Population ratios, 2.75 times. That's the ratio of people to properties. And interestingly, on census night, there were 195 or 4.9% of properties were vacant. Gross investment yields on average in that area are about 3.6%. The net investment yields are pretty low, 0.1%. Gross investment return, of course, is comparing the price 
with the theoretical rental that you might get if it was fully let. The net investment yields are to do with the real travel costs of the property, taking account of management costs and interest rate costs on the mortgage and maintenance costs. Now, the ATO reported that the average individual taxable income in the year 2021 was just over $109,000. And the census reported that the average household income was $144,000. Now, if we look at the disposable monthly income, on average, according to the census, it's around $7,791. And interestingly, looking at those who are borrowing, they are, on average, paying more than half of their income on servicing the mortgage, more than $4,000 a month. And those renting, it's even worse. They're at 57% of income on average, which is more than 4485 Now, of course, averages mask, but nevertheless, these are very, very high numbers. And that 57.6% proportion going on the rent explains why rental stress is so high. Now we'll go to look at postcode 2086. This is French's Forest. And this is an example of a house on 974 squares, five bedrooms, two bathrooms, two cars, listed 37 days ago on the 25th of August. It was on the 26th of August shown with an auction guide of $2.2 million. But on the 14th of September, the auction guide has been reduced to $2.05 million dollars. That's a pretty significant drop. And if we look at the data for the postcode, there are around 4,600 households in the postcode. 33% own outright, 50% are borrowing, and 15% are renting. And there are about 36% of households in mortgage stress on a cash flow basis, but most renters are having difficulty and the overall stress levels in the postcode are quite high at 45%. Looking at the price scenarios, the best case scenario is a fall, and over the next three years, cumulatively, we think there could be a fall of around 14%. The base case would be 37%. The worst case would be, horrifically, more than 50%, which is unlikely, but conceivable if the world economy crashes. Looking at the property profiles, 92% are houses, 3.1% are units, and 4.3% are other types of property. And the people ratio is 3.06. There were 3% or 134 properties vacant in the census last year. The gross investment yield is about 3.5%. The net investment yield is about 0.4%. And looking at the taxable income, the ATO reported the average taxable income per individual was $108,000 last year, whereas the household census reported the average household income was $161,000. And if we look at the monthly disposable income, that translates to around $8,500. And the typical mortgage borrower is paying 48% of their income, that's their disposable income, which is more than $4,100 on the mortgage. The average renter is paying about 46.5% of their income, which is around $3,987 a month, which helps to explain the rental stress problem that we see. Now we'll go to postcode 2087, and this is Forest Ville. And this is a three-bedroom, one-bath, one garage house, and it's listed at the moment at 1.55 million. Bit of a history to this one. It was listed 173 days ago on the 11th of April 2022. And there was a passed in at auction, and so it went on. It was on at 1.85 to 1.95 million. Then it was listed 1.65 to 1.8. Then it was on at 1.65. And now on the 7th of September, it's on at 1.55 million. And looking at this particular postcode, 
There are around 4,500 households there, 40% own outright, but 42% are borrowing, 17.5% are renting. Looking at the mortgage, looking at the price scenarios, on the best case scenario, there's a fall of around 7% over the next three years. The base case is closer to 30%. The worst case is closer to 50%. Property profile shows that around 85% are houses, 4.8% are units, and 9.8% are other types of property. Population ratio is 2.84. And in the census, 4.3% or 193 properties were vacant. Gross investment yield is about 3.6%. The net investment yield is 0.2%. And looking at the taxable income, the ATO reported the average taxable income per individual was $117,000, whereas the household census reported the average income at $145,000. And looking at those borrowing, 52% of disposable income is servicing the mortgage, which is over $4,000 a month, whereas the average renter is paying around 45.9% of their disposable income at Three thousand five hundred and eighty-eight doesn't therefore give too much surprise to find that rental stress is extremely significant, and the overall financial stress in the household is around thirty percent. Now we'll go to postcode two zero nine two C fourth, and this is a house on six hundred and eighty-nine squares, four bedrooms, two bathrooms, two cars. Listed 72 days ago on the 21st of July, and on the 28th of July it was on at $3.2 million, now on the 17th of September reduced to $3.1 million. And looking at this particular postcode, there are around 2,400 households in the postcode, 35% own outright, 47% are borrowing, and 16.5% are renting. There were around 15% of borrowers in mortgage stress, but 80% of renters in rental stress. And the overall financial stress count for the households is above 50 at 54%. Looking at the price scenarios, the best case would be a fall of around 17% over the next three years. The base case, a fall of 41%. The worst case, well, well over 50%, closer to 60%. Unlikely, but conceivable if everything crashes. Looking at the property profiles, 86.6% are houses, 5.1% are units, and 8.3% are other types of property. And the population ratio is 2.94. And looking at the vacancies, 5.3% were vacant, or 126 properties on census night. The gross investment yield is 3.4%. Net investment yield is underwater, down minus 0.2%. And looking at the disposable monthly income, the typical monthly disposable income is around $11,000 a month. A typical borrower is paying 46.5% of their income, or $5,200 on the mortgage, and the average rent is paying 31.9% of their disposable income, or more than $4,000 a month on the rent. The ATO reports that the individual taxable income is $166,800. The household census is reporting the average household income at $217,572. So the point I want to stress here is that these are very affluent households, and yet they're highly leveraged, which is why stress is so high. Now here's another property in the same postcode. This was again in Seaforth, and the house was on just over 1,000 squares, four bedrooms, two bathrooms, one car, and it was listed 227 days ago on the 16th of February 2022. On the 26th of August, it was on at $3.9 million. Now on the 10th of September, it's dropped to $3.7 million. Now we'll go to postcode 2093, and here is a house on 860 squares, four bedrooms, two bathrooms, two cars. It was listed 28 days ago on the 3rd of September, and on the 6th of September it was on at $3.3 million. But on the 10th of September it was then on at 2.6 to $2.86 million. 
And if we look at the particular postcode here, we can see that there are around 8,800 households, 31% are an outright, 40% are borrowing, and 27% are renting. Looking at mortgage stress, around 10% of households have issues, but a lot of renters are struggling at 80%. And as a result of that, we see that the property investment sector is under significant strain. Looking at the price scenarios, we think that over the next three years, the best case scenario is a cumulative drop around 10%. The base case is a fall of 35%. The worst case is a fall of 55%. Looking at the property profiles, we see that 53% are houses, 34% are units, and around 12% are other types of property. And the people ratio is 2.54%. On census night, 5.6% 5 or 500 properties were reported as vacant. Looking at the gross investment yield, on average around 3.6%. The net investment yield is just positive, but only slightly at 0.1%. The average taxable income, according to the ATO, is $144,700. That's in the year 2021. And the household census revealed an average gross income of $153,612 per household. The average monthly disposable income is just over $9,000. The typical borrower is paying 46% of their disposable income on the mortgage, or just over $4,000. The average rent is paying about 33% or one-third of their income with an average rent of around $2,990 a month. Now here's another example in the same postcode. This is a house on 465 square metres, two bedrooms, one bathroom, two cars, listed 66 days ago on 27th of July. And on the 28th of July, it was on at $2.75 million dollars. Now on the 13th of September, the auction guide is $2.5 million. Now we'll go to postcode 2094. And this is at Fairlight. It's a house on 434 squares, three bedrooms, two bathrooms, no car. And it was listed 130 days ago for auction. And it was shown there at around $2.6 million. Bit of a history to it. It was then for sale at $2.8 million. For sale between 2.7 and 2.8. And it was reduced to $2.45 million. Having last been listed at around $2.65. So the latest auction guide was at $2.45 million dollars. And if we look at the data for this particular postcode, just over 2,500 households, 31% owning outright, 32% borrowing, and 35% are renting. The scenarios are that the best case would be a fall of maybe 4.5 to 5% over the next three years, the base case a fall of 28%, the worst case a fall of 48%. Looking at the property profiles, 26% are houses, 50% are units, and 22% are other types of property, including over commercial premises and shops. The population ratio is 2.21, and there were 219 or 8.3% of properties vacant on census night. Gross investment yield is about 3.7%. The net investment yield is about 0.2%. Looking at the average taxable income, the ATO says around $137,000 per individual. And the census reported gross income of around $169,000 per household. Looking at the disposable monthly income, it's around $9,500 a month. And the typical borrower with a mortgage is paying around 43.4% of their income, or $4,160 a month. Whereas the average renter is paying around 37.5% of their net disposable income, which is more than $3,500 a month. Now we'll go to postcode 2096, Queen's Cliff. And this is an apartment. It has a gross rental yield of 3.72%. It was listed 135 days ago, and it's two bedrooms, one bathroom, one car. It was on on the 20th of July at $995,000 to $1.085 million. 
and on the 28th of July it was reduced to $925,000. And if we look at that particular postcode, we can see there are around 6,000 households, 26% are outright, 35% are borrowing, and 37% are renting. The mortgage stress is pretty low, but the rental stress is at significant 55.9%, and the overall stress from an investment point of view is also quite high. Looking at the price scenarios, Best case scenario is a fall of about 7% over the next three years. The base case is a fall of 30% and the worst case is a fall of half or 50%. Looking at the property profiles, around 39% are houses, 55% are units and 5.1% are other types of property. The people ratio is 2.25% and on census night 8.1% or 511 properties were reported as vacant. The gross investment yield on average is 3.3%. and The net investment yield is 0.3%. The average taxable income is $131,000, according to the ATO, whereas the household census is around $150,000 per household. The disposable monthly income is around $8,800. The typical borrower is paying about 43.7% of their income, or more than $3,800 a month for the mortgage, whereas the typical renter is paying around 35% of their income, or $3,000 a month. This is just over on the central coast at Cromer. It's a house on 600 squares with four bedrooms, two bathrooms, and one car. And on the 9th of August, when it was listed 53 days ago, it was on at 1.75 to 1.85 million dollars. Now, on the 31st of August, the sale guard is 1.7 million dollars. And if we look at that particular postcode, we can see that there are around 17,000 households there, with 24% owning outright, 36% borrowing, and 39% renting. Mortgage stress is at 23% for those with a mortgage. Mortgage stress is 23%. Rental stress is around 60% and financial stress overall is around half of households. The scenarios are a fall of 10% over the next three years, best case scenario, the base case a fall of 33% and the worst case a fall of 53% cumulative over the next three years. And looking at the property profiles, 39% are houses, 53% are units and 7% are other types of property. People ratios 2.36%. And there were more than 1,500 properties shown vacant on census night, or 6.6%. Gross investment returns around 3.4%. The net investment yield is underwater, minus 0.2%. Looking at the taxable income, the average taxable income from the ATO is reported at $92,000. The average household income is around $113,000 gross. Looking at the disposable monthly income, the average household is around $6,667 a month, and the typical mortgage holder is paying about 48% or $3,200 a month for the mortgage. The rental is on average around $2,740 a month or 41% of disposable income. Here's another property in the same area. This is North Curl Curl. This is a house on 518 squares. Six bedrooms, three bathrooms, two cars, and it was listed 31 days ago on the 31st of August. It was on, on the 2nd of September at $3.6 million, but on the 11th of September it was reduced to $3 million. Now we'll go to postcode 2100. This is North Manly. It's a house on 572 squares, three bedrooms, Three bathrooms, two cars, listed 51 days ago on the 11th of August. On the 12th of August it was shown at $2 million, but on the 26th of September it was reduced to $1.85 million. And if we look at this particular postcode, there are around 7,600 households, 29% are owning outright, 46% are borrowing, 24% are renting. And looking at the scenario, it's about 8% fall is best case scenario over the next three years, but 32% as a base case and 52% the worst case. 
Now looking at the property profiles, 73% are houses, 18% are units, and 7.6% are other types of property. The population ratio is 2.79, and the vacancies were reported at 4.4% or 331 on census night. Gross investment yield is about 3.4%. Net investment yield is underwater. Now looking at the ATO data, $101,000 is the average individual taxable income. The household census data reported the average household gross income at $141,000 a year. Disposable net monthly income is around $7,800 a month. The average borrower is paying about 48% or $3,700 a month for the rent, for the mortgage. The average renters paying about 38% or $2,990 a month. Now in the same postcode, this is some listed land. It was listed 255 days ago on the 19th of January this year. It's 893 square metres. And on the 4th of March, it was on at $1.7 to $1.8 million. On the 29th of April, it was reduced to $1.595 million. And it's still on the market. Now here's a house in the same postcode. This is at Beacon Hill. And it's a house with four bedrooms, two bathrooms, two cars, listed 37 days ago on the 25th of August. The auction guide on the 25th of August was $2 million. And now on the 23rd of September, it's for sale. The guide is $1.8 million. Here's another one, same postcode, listed 23 days ago. It's a house on 1,126 squares, five bedrooms, two bathrooms, two cars. And on the 9th of September, it was on at $2.495 million. But on the 13th of September, it was reduced to $2.295 million. Now we'll go to postcode 2101. And this is Ingleside. It's a house, seven bedrooms, five bathrooms, two cars. It's on the market somewhere between 3.075 and 3.15 million dollars. Now, 141 days ago, it was actually posted as an expression of interest. The guy was about 3.6 million dollars on the 24th of May. Then it was on the market at, for sale between 3.4 and 3.5 million dollars. Then it was on at 3.2 to 3.4, and it's now listed as we've said. And looking at the particular postcode, there's around 7,700 households in the postcode. 33% are owning outright, 37% are borrowing, and 29% are renting. The mortgage stress is pretty much not there, but rental stress is quite significant. And overall, the financial stress is not that high in the postcode, but enough to make a difference these days. Best case scenarios are full of about 6% over the next three years for houses. Base case is a fall of 29.9%. The worst case is a fall of 49%. The property profile shows that 53.5% of properties are houses, 35% are units, and 11% are other types of property. And the population ratio is 2.38. There were 475 properties listed on census night at 6.1%. And the gross investment yield is about 3.4%. And the net investment yield is 0.1%. The average taxable income from the ATO is about $98,900, whereas the household census reported the average household income is $116,000 per annum. But the disposable monthly income is around $6,700, and the average borrower is paying about 53% of their income, or $3,600, on the mortgage, whereas the average renter is paying around 44.5% of their disposable income, or $2,900 a month. Now here's another one in the same postcode at Narrabeen. This is a house on 659 squares. It's five bedrooms, two bathrooms, four cars, listed 46 days ago on the 16th of August. It was on for sale at $2.9 to $3.2 million on the 23rd of August. And on the 15th of September, it was on at $2.9 million. Another one in the same area, listed 79 days ago. It's a house on 2,321 squares, 
seven bedrooms, five bathrooms, five cars. And the price guide on the 11th of August was about $3.495 million. On the 20th of September, it was on at $3.395 million. Another one, same sort of area, listed 114 days ago on the 9th of June. It's a house, 651 squares, three bedrooms, one bathroom, one car. The guy price was $1.75 million on the 17th of July. And on the 27th of July, it was reduced to $1.65 million. And this one, same postcode, North Narrabeen, was listed 23 days ago on the 8th of September. It was a house on 645 squares, four bedrooms, two bathrooms, two cars. The guy was $1.95 million on the 8th of September. And it was dropped to $1.8 million on the 27th of September. Another one in the same area, listed 233 days ago on the 10th of February 2022. It's a house on 626 squares, four bedrooms, two bathrooms, one car. It was on on the 13th of March at 2.2 to $2.3 million. On the 22nd of September, it's on at $1.95 million. Now we'll go to postcode 2102, Warrywood. This is a townhouse with a gross rental yield of 3.31%, listed 80 days ago on the 13th of July, with three bedrooms, one bathroom, two cars. On the 20th of July, it was on at $1.55 million, but on the 7th of September, it was on at $1.495 million. And if we look at the details in the postcode, 2,800 households, 29% owning outright, 52% are borrowing, 18% are renting. And rental stress is very high at more than 83%, not much mortgage stress. And the financial stress is not too bad. Looking at the scenarios, the best case scenario is a fall of about 8% over three years. The base case is a fall of 30% and the worst case is a fall of 51%. Property profiles, 52% are houses, 22% are units and 25% are other types of property. Population ratio is 2.73 and the vacancies at 4.6% or 132 was quite low. Gross investment yields on average 3.5%. Net investment yields 0.4%. The average taxable income according to the ATO $102,000. The average household census data reported $135,000 for the gross total income for the household. Looking at the disposable monthly income typically around $7,200 a month. And the average borrower is paying around half or $3,600 a month. The typical rent is paying more than half at $3,738 a month. Here's another one in the same postcode. This was a house on 392 squares, five bedrooms, two bathrooms, two cars. Guy price is $2.25 million. Now, it was listed a considerable number of days ago, and there have been a series of moves down, having been passed in an auction. $2.55 million, $2.35 to $2.45, and now on at $2.25 million. Now we'll go to postcode 2103. This is Mona Vale, a house on 444 squares, four bedrooms, Two bathrooms, one car, listed 40 days ago on the 22nd of August. And on the 20th of August, it was showing at $2.25 million. Now, on the 7th of September, it's on at $1.95 million. And if we look at the particular postcode, there are around 4,200 households. 44% own outright, 33% are borrowing, 22% are renting. The rental stress is very high at 72%. And looking at the scenarios, the next three years could see the best case fall of about 7%, base case a fall of 30%, and the worst case nearly half. The property profiles show 53% of houses, 29% are units, and 17% are other types of property. And the population ratio is 2.41%, the vacancy rate 6.4%, or 271 properties on census night. The gross investment yields around 3.4%. The net investment yield is around minus 0.1%, so underwater. 
Looking at the average taxable income, it's just over $100,000, according to the ATO. But the household census showed that $119,000 is the average household gross income. The average disposable income on a monthly basis, around $6,800. Typical mortgage holder is paying around 53% of their disposable income, or $3,600 a month. Typical renter is paying around 47% or $3,200 a month. Here's another one in the same postcode. This was listed 95 days ago on the 27th of June with a gross rental yield of 2.52%. It's an apartment or unit. And the price guides around 1.65% on the 13th of July and the reduction to 1.55% happened on the 20th of September. It's two bedrooms, two bathrooms, two cars. Now we'll go to postcode 2014 Bayview. And this is a house listed 57 days ago with four bedrooms, three bathrooms, four cars on 695 squares. The auction guide on the 16th of August was 2.35 million. And now on the 6th of September, it's on at 1.975 to $2.17 million. And looking at the particular postcode, I just want to highlight that this has a very low count. So these results could be a little bit off because, of course, we're sampling a 0.5% sample across Australia. Nevertheless, 1,600 households, 57% are owning outright, 35% are borrowing and 8% are renting. And we're looking at a full best case of 7% over the next three years, the base case of 31% down, the worst case 50%. The property profiles show that 56% are houses and 19.5% are units. And the population ratio is on average just over 2. 9.6% or 164 properties were reported as vacant on census night. And the gross investment yield on average is around 3.4%. The net investment yield is positive just at 0.3%. The average taxable income according to the ATO is $173,000. That was in the year 2021. And the census reported the average household income at $98,000. So that shows there's quite a big disparity across the postcode. Now looking at the monthly disposable income, on average around $5,300. These next two figures I think are a little bit suspect. But on average, the borrower is paying around $4,000 per month. And the renter is $4,200 a month on average. Those percentages are probably not very accurate given the small sample size. Nevertheless, here's another property in the same area. This is vacant land, listed 150 days ago on the 4th of May. And it's 20,230 square metres. The guide price on the 17th of July was $1.95 million. Now on the 24th of August, it's on at $1.75 million. Now we go to postcode 2106. This is Newport. It's a townhouse, three bedrooms, two baths, two cars, listed 52 days ago on the 10th of August. And on the 6th of September, it was on at $2.75 million. Now on the 28th of September, it's dropped to $2.65 million. And looking at the postcode, around 3,700 households, 37% owning outright, 39% are borrowing, 23% are renting. And the mortgage stress is 35%. That's quite high, but the rental stress is even higher. And therefore, the financial stress measure overall is more than 51%. Looking at the scenarios, best case scenarios are full of about 14% over the next three years. Base case, 38 and the worst case, more than 50%. Units a little less down over the same period. That's partly because prices for units didn't rise as much over the last couple of years. Look at the property profile, 63% are houses, 27% are units, and 9.4% are other types of property, and the people ratio is 2.4%. The vacancy rate 7.4%, or 287 properties on census night, and the gross investment yield is 3.4%, but the net investment yield is minus 0.1%, so underwater. Average taxable income is around $115,000, according to the ATO, and the census reported the average household income at $128,000. Looking at the monthly disposable income, it's around $7,564 a month. And on average, people are paying around 47% of their income 
or $3,600 on the mortgage, and 39.5% or $2,990 a month on the rent. Another one in the same postcode. This is a house on 658 squares, six bedrooms, four bathrooms, four cars, listed 142 days ago on the 12th of May. And on the 18th of July, it was on at $3.8 million. On the 14th of September, it's on at 3.4 to $3.6 million. And this was listed 29 days ago. It's a house on 601 squares, five bedrooms, three bathrooms, four cars. And it was on the 7th of September at $5.7 million as a guide. But on the 1st of October, it was on at 4 0.75 million dollars so a considerable change in that price and if we look at the details in the postcode around 5,600 households in the postcode 43 percent own outright 42 percent are borrowing and 14 percent are renting mortgage stress is at 25 percent rental stress is 75 percent and the overall financial stress metric is a little lower than some other postcodes we looked at today nevertheless Scenarios have fallen around 10% over the next three months, best case. Base cases have fallen more than 30%, and the worst cases have fallen more than 50%. Look at the property profiles 86% are houses, 9.7% are units, and 3.4% are other types of property. People ratio 2.54%. There were 8.9% or 519 properties vacant reported on census night, and the gross investment yield is 3.6%, whereas the net investment yield is minus 0.2%. The ATO reported the average taxable income on $128,000 and the census reported the household's income on average $136,000 per annum. But the disposal monthly income is around $7,368 a month and the typical borrower is paying around 53% of their income or $3,900 on the mortgage. Typical renter paying more than half of their income on the rent at $3,700 a month. Here's another one in the same postcode. Listed 72 days ago on the 21st of July. It's a house with four bedrooms, two bathrooms, two cars at Avalon Beach. The guide was $1.795 million on the 5th of August. But on the 28th of September, it dropped to $1.55 million. Gross rental yield is 5.89%, which is better than the average in the postcode. Here's another one listed 38 days ago. It's an apartment unit or flat, two bedrooms, two bathrooms, two car spaces at Avalon Beach. And it was listed at $1.5 to $1.6 million on the 17th of September. On the 27th of September, it was at $1.49 million. So there you have it, a bit of a snapshot of the northern beaches and just up into the central coast. And I think there are three observations. One is prices are falling and they're actually moving down quite significantly. Secondly, a lot of households are putting a lot of their disposable income into either renting or indeed paying that mortgage. And I think the other observation is that most of the properties here are in the more affluent sector of the market. And as I've been saying quite a lot in recent times, the affluent stress story is one worth watching. Because, of course, households with big incomes have big expenses. And at the moment, a lot of them are under pressure simply because the cost of living are rising, as well as, of course, the massive interest rates. And if you have a big mortgage, even a small lift in the mortgage rate is enough to put considerable pain on the household budget. That's why we expect to see property prices in this area continue to fall. And that's why, in our worst case scenario, the falls could be quite significant. Now, again, I would stress that the worst case scenario is not my normal base case. And it could be, of course, that the Reserve Bank reverses course quicker than we might expect. But if not, then we must expect property prices to continue to fall here as interest rates rise. And again, I would make the point that the most significant impact on property prices is interest rates. So just before I go, let me thank Cook again for doing the research and say if there are other areas across the country you'd like information on, leave the comments below. We'll add it to the list. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.